Uh, hey. How's it going again? Uh, I've got to admit, to finally be working on something new is a wonderful breath of fresh air. Aside from a college or university assignment or something that physically takes literal months to put together, I don't think I've ever spent as much time working on a singular project as I had the previous video. I mean, don't get me wrong, I loved working on the Silent Hill 2 project and the reception has been absolutely amazing. You're all way too kind to me, I cannot thank you enough for that. But I also can't deny that coming out of the other end of such a huge behemoth of a video to then trying to figure out what the actual fuck I want to cover next has felt pretty much identical to... <laughs> anyway, the truth is, I haven't really been able to nail down what I want to cover next. It's felt bizarrely unfamiliar to go back to the start of a project after three to four months straight of going through the process of another, like crawling through a very, very long percentage bar. So while figuring out what the next video is actually going to be, I've ended up accumulating some footage, notes and ideas of what could have been videos, but ultimately ended up fizzling out when it came to getting them fully realised. It's not that I didn't like the games, because I do, it's more the fact that the enthusiasm simply wasn't there, or perhaps I didn't have enough to say that it then felt like it warranted a full video. So instead of wasting the time and work that has already gone into these, we're going to do something a little different today and just quickly power through four mini reviews that don't go into massive detail, but at least showcase the games that I still feel are worth your time. So let's begin. I feel like we're in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the only thing I've talked about. Initially produced as a mod for Doom 2, and then eventually getting revamped as a standalone release in 2016, Unloved is a grimy, visually Silent Hill-esque survival horror shooter, with some heavy sprinklings of Doom 2016 in there. And within this game, there is one key objective. Survive the Horde until you eventually escape. And I really like this game. Albeit in, maybe, small doses. Mostly consisting of wave-based shooting galleries similar to your Left 4 Dead's and Nazi Zombies of the last two decades, Unloved stands apart as one that is far more focused on retaliatory gameplay, or to put it more simply, enemy spawns and gameplay mechanics that grow increasingly more aggressive depending on the choices the player makes. As opposed to the endlessly repeating cycles of a Nazi Zombies round, Unloved prefers to let you control how things progress. If you power through the maps, opening up doors upon doors, regardless of whether or not you even needed to, and collecting every item under the sun that, again, you might not necessarily be in need of, you will then trigger more brutal enemy spawns that in turn then need to be dealt with. Which means in a lot of ways, you control how each and every round progresses. True, you can't exactly get away with just cowering in a corner, hoping that the demonic elevator will get soft and offer to scoop you on out of there without the required blood sacrifice, but it does at least mean that there is a little bit more strategy involved compared to the constantly punishing waves of STAY AWAY FROM MY VODKA! And as for the gameplay itself, it has to be said that while a little bit buggy at times, Unloved feels visceral as fuck to play. Enemy variety is fleshed out enough to keep things relatively unpredictable while you frantically manoeuvre around them, whereas the gunplay itself feels weighty in the same vein that Doom 2016 did. While the arsenal is minimal, each and every gun kicks back beautifully, the sound design rendering such weapons as the shotgun a booming kick to the stomach each and every time you let the thing off. And to be honest, there isn't really a single weapon here that comes across as a half measure either, or pointless temporary addition to the roster until you get your hands on something more powerful. Even the starting pistol remains a perfectly valid option throughout the mid to late map sections, and to round things off nicely, you'll also find yourself collecting upgrades and other such useful items, which then help in fleshing out your preferred playing style as you begin to tinker things to your liking. And in case you were wondering, no, there's no solo campaign here, I'm sorry. Unloved is 100% multiplayer focused, which while entertaining is also something of a downfall for the longevity of the game, as unfortunately the online community is kind of dead by this point. While recording the footage for this game, it was rare that anyone would actually be around, with most of my time spent with Unloved either being solo runs, which can get a little dull after a while, or because I ended up recruiting a willing spook to hop in and help me, which does make the game a lot more fun. Holy shit! 
It's my father-in-law. Now, if you've seen my previous No One Lives Under The Lighthouse video, you're probably wondering why I've included it here. And the easy answer is that because of the newly released director's cut, this game has changed. And particularly in regards to the second half of the story, it's changed a lot. While the original version of the game was certainly one that I enjoyed and I happily recommended it nearly a year ago, to not acknowledge how radically different the second half of the game now is compared to the much maligned Mothman grievances of my former review, it would kind of feel like a disservice to the developer. Now in its place we have an entirely new fleshed out second half. The scope of the plot and even the locations themselves are now far larger and more interesting. The lore is more fully realised and there are a few changes to the late game gameplay that does shake things up quite a bit. It's not just a cheap re-release, this is a very elaborate director's cut. I'm not going to say too much here for the sake of spoilers, and because, as it also turns out, Mandalore did recently cover this game, and as to be expected of his material, it's an excellent fucking video and you should just go watch his instead. I mean it, the man did a great job, and it was really nice to see the game get some much needed extra attention. But I did at least want to state that I really do love the improvements that have been made on this game. If you liked the look of this game previously, and hey, maybe even felt inclined to try it after watching the original review, there are now a dozen more fantastic reasons as to why you should give No One Lives Under the Lighthouse a go if you happen to be in the mood for a short yet very sweet horror game. Tis the season after all. Once again touching on a wave based game, this is actually the only non-horror title I'm going to talk about today, and for very good reason. Akane is an absolute blast to play. I have been trying to get an Akane review out of my system for months, and yet every time I try to do so it just keeps getting overruled by something else, or the script didn't hold up all that much in my opinion, or maybe the motivation wasn't there. Which is really, really annoying because I actually have a lot of love for this game. Again, this is a non-solo campaign kind of gig, so if you're looking for a story, there isn't one there, but the gameplay itself is a lot of fun. Drenching the player in some wonderfully vibrant cyberpunk aesthetics, you take on the role of Akane, a calm, cool as fuck lone assassin who decides to go on right ahead and kick the most colourful hornet's nest you've ever seen. And once you've gotten the hang of controlling Akane and adjusted to the pace of the gameplay, this can be an immensely satisfying arcade hack and slash experience. Tasked with massacring the waves of various enemies that are very presently coming your way, from melee focused cyber samurai looking dudes to snipers that stay back and try to take you out from a distance, or perhaps the tanky hit sponges, Akane's gameplay loop is again another that feels great in small doses, and also offers a fair bit of challenge too. For one thing, although you can kill most enemies with a single hit, you yourself also do suffer the exact same vulnerability, which means that as you continue to zip around the map fending off dozens of enemies at once, one wrong move and you're out. Finito. And it's all the way back to the start of the round. Sometimes you won't even know what hit you, simply due to how fast paced the game can be, and this can be very frustrating at times. But what the style of gameplay does do, is it makes every single engagement feel thrilling because it can easily result in failure. And when you do eventually get through a round and have a chance to catch your breath, it is exhilarating. And again, in the same vein as Unloved, you'll also gradually unlock additional tech and weaponry, which can make certain aspects of Akane a little bit more manageable, but it's worth noting that it's very rare to ever feel overpowered. You're always at risk of failure, and you're always forced to pay attention, no matter what kind of kit you went with at the start of the round. Oh, and uh, the soundtrack is an absolute goddamn banger. I don't know if I'm cool enough to say banger, but...
I vote for an airstrike, sir. Negative. The higher-ups want the site intact, survivors or not. We're cleared for light and medium munitions, but no heavy stuff. That means no airstrikes and no Alice. Sorry, Harrison. We're supposed to evac survivors? Our orders are to put out fires, then dig in and wait for the sixth. Assuming we last that long. Montage. Oh. I feel really, really bad for including this one here, especially after it being over a year since I reviewed AVP 99. But I have to admit, I got really burned out on trying to get an Aliens vs Predator 2 review piece together. That's not to say the game's bad, because it's not. It's a very solid installment within the Aliens vs Predator franchise, developed by Monolith as opposed to the AVP 99 Rebellion team. But what I quickly came to realise while scripting the video is that I didn't actually have a whole lot I wanted to say about it, and half of what I could say had already essentially been covered in the first review. While not nearly as breakneck frenetic as AVP 99, Aliens vs Predator 2 follows a very similar formula of three dedicated horror shooter campaigns for the Marines, Xenomorph and Predator, and these are all mostly solid, but they're also quite similar to the first game in a lot of ways. To start with the Marine campaign, it is a little bit more horror focused, and it's fun to break out Hudson's hacking tool and the welding torch from Aliens. I definitely prefer the second half of the campaign to the first, but overall it's pretty solid. Whereas the Xenomorph campaign is kind of the complete opposite. I loved the opening chapters, with Aliens vs Predator 2 actually allowing you the opportunity to not only skitter around the place as a facehugger, but even eat your way out of some dude's chest, to then scuttle back and forth as a chest burster until you grow to full size. It's ridiculously entertaining. In fact, in a lot of ways, I would have much preferred an extended facehugger to chestburster portion of the campaign, maybe even have that be the first 40-50%. to 50%. Sure, it's still fun to rip and tear through innocent civvies and gormless marines, and that itch is very satisfactorily scratched, I assure you, but the Xenomorph campaign also is rather undeniably samey towards the end. Your movement is also less intense compared to AVP 99, so ping-ponging around the rooms isn't nearly as fun. To be honest, aside from some one-on-ones with a predator, the direction of the second half of the Xenomorph campaign is fairly unremarkable. The Empress is mine. And also, speaking of unremarkable, you might recall that I mostly disliked the Predator campaign of AVP 99, and as for Aliens vs Predator 2... It's better. In fact, it's much better. To the point of it actually being my favourite campaign of the game. From start to finish, the Predator campaign is a massive love letter to the 1987 classic movie. The stealth cloak is far more reliable to the previous game, the OP tankiness that I complained about previously has now been reduced, which then offers some genuine risk and reward when getting through more difficult areas, and hell, even the spear gun feels more weighty and also allows you the opportunity to reclaim used bolts, as well as the heads of your enemies. I guess if I have to criticise anything about this game overall, it would perhaps be how easily you're able to quick save each and every obstacle into absolute oblivion. While the original 1999 game installed a limit of 5 quick saves per level, which then in turn resulted in some extremely tense moments of gameplay due to the fact that each and every death was going to set you back fairly substantially, with AVP 2, you're given an unlimited number of quick saves to use and abuse as you see fit and it completely destroys any feeling of actual failure when you die. And yes, before you say anything, I'm aware that quick saves and auto saves and manual saves, they aren't exactly a new or uncommon thing, they're a staple of countless games. But with the first game having presented such a distinctive, albeit maybe cheap form of challenge, the shift to a far more easily abused save system ended up turning a lot of AVP2's toughest moments into a simple act of rinse and repeating the same 30 seconds until getting through in one piece. Still, don't get me wrong, this game is a lot of fun and I really enjoyed my time with it. It's also moddable to hell, which means you can do shit like this.
then that's it, I guess. I'm sorry these weren't more fleshed out or weren't released as more established reviews, but after finishing off the Silent Hill 2 video and having held on to some of these for well over six months, it felt like it was a good time now to just do some housekeeping before I then move on to something fresh again. And before I do go, I have to say it again, thank you so much to everyone that checked out the last video. Next up is going to be something in the vein of what I've reviewed previously on the indie horror side of things, but until then, thank you again. I'm extremely upset. Oh shit! You good? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. <laughs>